Welcome to Kane's product presentation and thanks for your interest in our instrumentation. I'm Martin Reynolds, the head of our advanced imaging team and this afternoon I would like to talk to you about our spinning disc and focal upgrade for quantitative fluorescence imaging uh, from low light samples. In our earlier presentation you will have seen the open frame and been introduced to the different components of that. So here we have a base configuration on which we've mounted an automated XY stage with the fast piezo Z and on the side of the unit we have the Crest x light spinning disc confocal. We construct our acquisition systems around a variety of software acquisition platforms but this afternoon we are going to show you the system integrated using the open source platform Micromanager. First I would like to give you an overview of the hardware that we're using for our confocal configuration today. As I mentioned, we're using a Cane open frame, a base configuration to couple the imaging hardware to. This consists of a detection layer which has the left hand side port coupled to the spinning disc confocal. It has an epifluorescence layer and a manual focusing layer. On top of the focusing layer we have an automated XYZ stage from ASI that provides motorised XY positioning and a fast piezo Z scanning through Z of the sample. The fluorescence illumination for the system is supplied from an 89 North LDI illuminator. This is equipped with 405 440, 470, 500, 520, 555 and 640 nanometer lines. These can be selected individually or in combination um, for your, any of the illumination channels that you want to configure for the experiment. This is coupled through multi-mode fibers into the input of the Crest spinning disc confocal. On the rear of the unit we're using a Prime 95B 22 mil um, diagonal sensor to for high sensitivity detection of the fluorescence signal from the sample. The heart of this confocal imaging system is the Crest X Light V3 unit. This unit provides the automation that is needed for the high speed synchronization that is required for live cell fluorescence measurements. The light path consists of an excitation filter wheel, a dichroic filter wheel and an emission filter wheel which can change the component positions in tens of milliseconds to allow very fast channel switching between wavelengths. If I show here, we go have a sample that is live on the microscope. I just refocus that slightly and then we can switch from 405 to DAPI excitation to 488 or 470 in this case with the LDI 555 and 640 so we have just the emission filter changing and I'm changing channels here the changes are happening in a few tens of milliseconds One of the key features of the x V3 unit is its high uniformity. It achieves a high uniformity by use of microlens arrays uh, in the illumination path. And these can provide in excess of 90% uniformity across the full field of view. The system is designed to illuminate and to detect over fields of view in excess of 26 millimeters so it can take full advantage of the accessible field on the very largest options available on modern commercial microscopes. So to show that here, I'll just move to a different location and we'll go live. 
just again just refocus slightly and you can see from the bottom corner to the top corner on both sides so you're not really touching the stage both diagonals that there's no drop off in intensity towards the edge of the image this is particularly important when you're image stitching or if you have sparse samples where you want to have one or two samples, one or two cells at disparate locations in the field. Such an example of the disparate locations would be shown in this type of sample here. Now to follow on on the point about the field of view size, if I show on the screen the field of a standard sensor, the yellow box now shows you what you would see if you were imaging with a regular 18mm diagonal sensor on this system. You wouldn't be able to image both of those particular samples. And with the, with the larger field of view, you have a big compromise in the field that you can acquire. If you're using this sensor for, or these large sensors, for image stitching, then it's important not to illuminate outside of the field of view where the sample may become bleached. And the system here has an automated aperture to control the illumination field of view so that it can exactly match the field of the camera. So to show you how that works here, I have a setting where I've reduced the field to just under the center quadrant of what we see here. So now this is what's being illuminated at the sample. We're still detecting from the full field of view in this case. We haven't subregioned the camera but we're only illuminating that area. And that's under full control uh, from software. This feature allows you to fully optimize the illumination for your sample and to protect the out of area Another useful feature of the Hexlight unit is its ability to couple multiple cameras simultaneously on the standard unit. So all the features that we're describing here are available as standard. We have two ports on the rear of the Hexlight. So currently we have the Prime 95B with a large field of view, with a 22mm field of view attached. We could also attach another camera onto the top here. This could either be a similar camera or an identical camera for, to allow you to simultaneously measure uh, and record from two different wavelengths at the same time. Or you could have two different cameras with different compromises, one for sensitivity and one for field size, perhaps. So attaching the second camera is as simple as just dropping it onto the cement, in this case. For the largest fields of view, the, you will need an F-mount system rather than a, a C-mount. They have a two camera configuration and to activate the camera then you make use of a filter slider that is that fits in the side here so a filter slider that allows up to three different configurations to be fitted at one time so for instance you could have a straight through position you could have a hundred percent mirror in another position to effectively act, act as a port switcher and in a third position you could have a chromatic separation so you can simultaneously record on the two channels. In each of the positions you've got provision for uh, emission filters and for added flexibility um, we can 
we can add filter wheels to each of the emission ports to provide full control over wavelength selection. The final point to mention is the ability to interchange the spinning disk module itself. As standard, the unit has 50 micron pinholes spaced to give you a good performance with dim samples. Different disk patterns are available that will allow you to choose a different compromise between confocality and light throughput. These are either with different pinhole spacings or with slip pattern discs. To change the discs, it is a simple process of just removing a cover and then lifting the disc out of the unit. So the unit should be powered down before you do this. At the moment it's powered up, but I'll just show you how straightforward the process is. So you undo four screws on either side of this retaining cap and lift the cover off. There is a retaining bolt on either side of the disc module. Which is loosened. There's a clip here to undo and then the disc slides out of the unit. The new disc is slotted out and goes back in. It's as straightforward as that. So if on different, different days or different weeks you have different types of experiments being carried out, it's perfectly feasible to interchange the disc head from day to day. So that covers all the main features of the spinning disc unit itself. I hope I've shown you in this short presentation the versatility that is built into the Crest and Focal Unit and the flexibility that we offer with the Cairn configurations and the Cairn stand. The Crest system can be offered as a complete system as we've shown you here or we can integrate it together with commercial frames such as the Nikon TI2 frame that we commonly use. Alternatively we can offer it as a standalone upgrade for any commercial frame, any research grade commercial frame that has a C mount or an F mount side port on, uh, available.